Why, hello, everybody. It's me, Tyrone. And as always, I'm joined by Jay, and we are doing a very, very special bonus edition of the Good Friends, Better Enemies podcast. Jay, what the hell are we going to do right now? Tell everybody. We're going to watch something. We're going to watch a special Saturday night's main event from February 3rd, 1989. The Mega Powers are going to explode. I am excited about this because this is the first watch along that you and I are going to do together. And spoiler alert, kids, we're not sober. So who knows what's going to happen tonight? We may or may not drink a beer. More than likely we will. We also want to uh, tell you that we are going to do this format a little bit differently than our, uh, our mother podcast uh, with uh, Mike and uh, Tyler, the Counted Out 7 podcast, where we do watch-alongs with the video clips on YouTube. We're actually going to do steal, actually, or borrow, I think is a more polite term, from other podcasts, where we're going to uh, give you timestamps and individual events on the WWE Network. And then from there, you can follow along with us as we discuss what's on the screen. We're going to have some fun anecdotes. Tyrone's going to get pissed off at some point. I'm going to drink more beer. And then it's probably going to be lights out. I may or may not have just eaten an edible for this one, too. So just, just as a heads up. That's fine. Keep in kayfabe, pal. I, I'm appreci- I appreciate it about that. So... Um, Tyrone, do you want to just discuss a little bit what's going on in the uh, in the Fed at the time? I mean, obviously, this is like I am very much educated about this era, but this is not the new generation. So I'm going to let you take the lead. This is your wheelhouse. Uh, I love this era. I'm I'm very familiar with it, but obviously not to the granular detail that I am the uh, the new generation era. So why don't you take it away, pal, and talk to us a little bit of what's going on right now? Well, it's a weird era to talk about, only in the sense that you can't really break it down month by month because they were doing things called long-term booking at this point. So almost a year prior to this, the Macho Man Randy Savage won the WWF title at WrestleMania four in a 16 man tournament, defeating Butch Reed, one man gang and Ted DiBiase on his way to winning the title. There actually, no, there was one more in there. Who am I forgetting? Jay, help me out. Was it Greg Valentine? I think it was. Uh, anyway, anyway, we'll, we'll fact check that or, uh, Rob, if you're listening, just fact check it for us. Let us know. That's good. And then we moved on and him and my, uh, sorry, him pronouns, pal to steal again. Um, we had macho man, Randy Savage teaming up with Hulk Hogan and forming the mega powers. And they were just running all over the place. Hulkamania was running ri- wild. The madness was on top of everything. They were knocking out people like the Twin Towers. Uh, We had that SummerSlam main event where they took on Andre the Giant and Ted DiBiase. Um, And then all of a sudden you fast forward to the Royal Rumble. And did either of these men win the Royal Rumble, Jay? I don't think they did. I think it was won by Big John Studd, which made no sense to me. Because he was gone shortly thereafter. No one even brings him up, and this would have been, I believe, the next show after that Royal Rumble, and he's not even mentioned on the card. That's the weird time that we're living in there, guys. You want to talk about 2020 being weird, 89 was pretty weird, too. Yeah, it was a bit of a transition time in the company. I mean, it wouldn't be too too, too far removed from this. I mean, you know, like a little over a year where we'd have Warrior winning the title over Hogan and, and being passed the torch. Sort of strange that uh, Savage wasn't uh, holding on to the title uh, longer or at least uh, been sort of given that torch, that that run longer than he was. If you think about it back in the day, I mean, we talked about this on a previous podcast. Imagine, imagine if you had saved that Hogan and uh, Savage main event for WrestleMania 6 instead of WrestleMania 5. Having that uh, that main event in the Sky Dome with sixty eight thousand people would have been much more big an impact than what we got at the Trump Plaza. So, very interesting time. I mean, but but to what you just said about your surprise that Savage didn't get a longer run, you got to look at the time frame, man. Like before that, Hogan held the title for what almost four years or just over four years. 
And then, but he beat the Iron Sheik, who only held it for a month. And then you had your Bob Backlunds and Bruno San Martinos that held it for years. And then you had your Stasiaks and your Grams and your Koloffs, who barely held it. So I think a year title run is still pretty freaking awesome. And yes, should he held it a little longer? Yeah. He held it longer than Warrior, which is important. Held it longer than Slaughter, which is important. And he held it longer than most of Bret Hart's reigns, which is even more important. Uh, well, uh, he didn't hold it longer than Diesel, so there you go. Suck my dick. Fuck <laughs> Diesel. <laughs> Fair enough, pal. Uh, I'm not going to do that, but... Um... I think 89, as you said, I mean, you see a changing of the guard, like somebody like, like big John stud, who was, you know, fairly prominent, uh, throughout like say the initial WrestleMania, like having that match with Andre and stuff like that. The first ever WrestleMania, um, didn't do a whole lot after that. He'd had some sporadic things here and there, but you saw some people in like 89 that weren't necessarily going to go forward into the nineties. It's kind of the same way that you saw a changing of the guard, like 10 years later with the attitude era. Um, seeing people that were sort of integral to certain uh, parts of the decade previous that weren't going to move forward and be part of the future of the company. So Big John Studd's a great example of that, I think. Now, Jay, you were not watching the product at this time, right? Like as a, as a child, you weren't into wrestling at this time? No, I didn't start until uh, 96. But, you know, like once I became a fan of the product, I mean, I went back and I've watched everything. You know, if, if the last, what, 20, 24 years, 25 years, I've been watching this product. So I'm very, very well versed in the product. It's just a matter of um, just a matter of not, you know, having that firsthand knowledge. I think that's part of the reason why my... Um, my favorite era is the new generation era is because I grew up watching it. That's what first sort of made me fall in love with the business. So for me, that's the, that's the era where I can just spout off stuff. Like in a previous podcast, we were talking about in your house, it's time. And you're asking me about, uh, in your house, um, final four. And I was like, yeah, Chattanooga, Tennessee, uh, you know, February 15th, 1997, all this kind of stuff. So I'm able to spout that stuff off because I know it. So, it's so ingrained in me from childhood. And I think that you're sort of the same way with the uh, golden age of wrestling. Um, the Federation years, as I like to call them. Um, so it's, it's kind of interesting that we both have this encyclopedic knowledge of two different eras. I think it's kind of cool, actually. Well, what I just learned there, folks, is if you ask Jay if he was watching wrestling at the time, he goes on a whole lecture as to why he was not, but then why he went back. Where all I was going to do was follow up with, Hey, Jay, do you think he would have been a Hulkamaniac or a Macho Madness fan at this time? <laughs> I'm sorry. Sometimes when I have a couple of Coors Lights, I end up going on diatribes. My apologies. Answer the um, question, Jay. Hulk Hogan or Macho Man? Who would you, be in a, who would you have been a fan of? Oh, that's like asking me if I would be in Brett or Sean. I guess. Mm, I want to say Macho Man, but I'd probably be Hogan. I I think that's an honest answer, and I can respect that, because I know as a... What, how old was I at this point? Jesus, I wasn't even really watching. I was two and a half years old when this came out. But as a child, I was definitely a Hulkamaniac, and Macho Man was almost an afterthought for me, because by the time I really became a fan, we're looking at... And can remember, I should say. We're looking at 91, 92, where... He wasn't really prominent. He had his retirement match that was fantastic against Warrior, but I was also an Ultimate Warrior kid because what four or five-year-old wasn't at that time? Um, but as I got older, Macho Man, as, as we discussed on, on a previous podcast, I think it was the December to Dismember one, Macho Man's on my Mount Rushmore. And I got a lot of flack from people on that, by the way, that he was on there and that I didn't put a Hulk Hogan or a Bruno San Martino on there. Whereas they both have their right and privilege to be on people's Mount Rushmore's because they did great things. San Martino is the longest reigning champion ever. That will never be touched. It, it is what it is. He is not, to me, what I grew up on and who I think are the best wrestlers. It's all opinion, and opinion is it's, it's subjective. It is what it is. 
You want to put San Martino on yours? Do it. I didn't put it on mine. Nope, that's exactly right. I mean, we talked about that. That's exactly the point that I made about it. It also has to do with criteria, right? Like you can't, you can't necessarily base the Mount Rushmore on one particular. Like you can't, you can't paint it with one particular brush. I think that there are different um, versions of Mount Rushmores. I mean, you're not going to lump like, let's say for example, you have like the the top stars in the history of wrestling you know you're gonna have you know hogan and 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 austin and 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 uh rock and whomever else um i think it has more to do with uh like so taking that into comparison with say like the greatest submission wrestlers or technical wrestlers of all time they're obviously going to be very different lists so the lists themselves have to be vetted in terms of their uh mount rushmore status before you're going to start getting into uh, more granular detail about who you choose on those lists. The specificities of the list are are very important as well, right? Well, that's just it. Like if you ask somebody who only grew up watching, or not only, but at least what they grew up watching was ECW in 1997, they could very well put Shane Douglas on their their Mount Rushmore or Sabu or Rob Van Dam. Like you know what I mean. And I would yeah. not dis- or I would not agree with that, but I understand why they're putting it on there. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, that like means- I, I know that you, I know that you would probably put Sid on your Mount Rushmore of the best big men to deliver a power bomb in 1997 between the months of December or between the months of November and December, and for that one. I would, might give him an honorable mention on my list. Oh boy, here we go. Oh, you and your Sid. Oh, by, by the way, just to uh, just to mention something, uh, I did over the holidays. I saw an old clip of um, from '96 when Sid was champion. They they did uh, they remade some Christmas carols, having uh, Sid interjected in those. Uh, like one was called Oh Power Bomb, Oh Power Bomb, and stuff like that. So I thought that was kind of fun. Um, I know you're not a big Sid Mark, but sometimes those little fun things. The other thing I wanted to say was I mentioned something in a um, text, group text between yourself and uh, Tyler through the holidays as well. Is why are we, why do we not have an in your house gingerbread house thing that we can order from WWEshop.com? That thing would sell like hotcakes. I'm not going to lie. I don't know how I missed that text because I probably would have popped at that. And you're right. Why don't we do that next next year? Let's just screw copyright and let's make our own in your house. Good friends, better enemies, gingerbread house. This screw is it. Sure. This is a lock. We are going to we are absolutely going to make an in your house set out of gingerbread next year. That's happening. That's a that is a lock. Are we going to remember talking about this tomorrow or are we going to listen to this and be like, oh shit, what did we get ourselves into? Uh, no, I think we'll listen. We'll remember. I just, well, you were the one that ate an edible, so we'll see. And I already forgot doing it, so that's where we're at right now. <laughs> well, without further ado, I guess, you have anything else you want to blather on about before we get into this uh this uh, watch along yeah a, li- a, li- a little bit i would really like you to tell me your favorite moment of 1989 as a wrestling fan just just let me know what your favorite part of it was um well it's kind of hard for me to, to sort of pinpoint one i mean this is a big one the mega powers exploding is a huge one um I I really really loved the build to this WrestleMania match with Hogan and uh, and Savage. I think uh, for me, uh, it's probably not going to get uh, much better than this um, in terms of '89. The build to this is so incredibly well done. It is so uh, intricate in its its detail. Uh, it all makes sense. It's a super easy story to to understand, especially for casual fans. I think that the thing that's sometimes lost on us who are like very, very hardcore wrestling fans or marks, marks, whatever you want to call us, is a lot of times when when wrestling is super hot, like in the 80s or the late 90s, the Attitude Era or the Golden Era of wrestling, whatever you want to call it, 
uh, in the in the late late eighties, mid to late eighties, rock and wrestling connection. Um, that a lot of casual people tune in, and they are not um, necessarily educated about the the intricacies of angles or storylines or even characters. So for this particular story, I think it was such an easy story for people to grasp. Um, Sorry, Jay, are you saying that? I- you saying that then were more casual fans or people tuning in now might remember this and they're casual fans now? No, what I'm saying is, is I think that what happens is like culturally, like for, I can only speak to myself more specifically for the attitude era because that's when I was watching wrestling that there was a lot more people that were watching wrestling because it was the in thing at the time. They weren't necessarily fans of wrestling per se, but they were watching it because it was like the the entertainment du jour, for lack of a better term. And I think something that's something of the same thing is true for the for the golden age of wrestling, the the, the federation years. So what I'm trying to say is that the understanding and the simplicity of this angle resonated to people much more clearly, as opposed to the intricate nature that some of the other angles might have had. So I think it 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 it, it translated a lot more clearly to fans that were maybe not invested in wrestling as much as say you and I are. Yeah, that's totally fair. I, I, I feel like there's not a man on this planet who has not either been accused of having a crush on his friend's wife or girlfriend, or been that guy who thinks that his friend has a crush on his girlfriend or wife. We've all been in that situation. We've all been macho man and we've all been Hulk Hogan in this one. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think it's you know you, there's always going to be that jealousy aspect and all that kind of thing. So I don't know. I, I just think it's kind of uh, I think it's kind of just fair to to, to think that um, the entire scope and scale of night of 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 the '80s, the closing portion of the '80s going into the '90s was absolutely encompassed by this angle. So I don't think that there's anything else in in '89 that's really going to grab my attention more than this this mega powers exploding angle i agree and as i as i'm sure you can hear crack another drink i think it's time that we get this show on the road and finally watch this watch along are you ready my friend i most certainly am so you're going to go into the wwe network and you're going to go to the in-ring portion of the wwe network you're going to scroll down to the Saturday night's main event uh, icon and click on the February 3rd, 1989 episode of Saturday night's main event. So we'll give uh, the folks and a with, to, to get there. Yep. Yeah, and uh, while we're, while we're talking about that, Jay, do you have any, uh, any plans for, for the upcoming future? Are you uh you gonna buy a house? You gonna buy a car? You gonna buy a puppy? You just gonna go and buy a six pack? What do you What are your plans there, bud? I think I'm planning on maybe building an in your house gingerbread house. That's probably what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start now, and then by the I time I already I'm forgot time. about that. Oh my god! Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. That sounds fun. All right. Well, I think we've given everybody enough time to skip past the ads that they offer on the network, which. God bless them. Go watch the NXT product. Go buy whatever they're selling on ShopZone. I know Jay and I probably have almost everything. So I think yeah. on on the count of three, we'll do a three, two, one play. And when I say play, we're going to hit play together. Does that sound good, Jay? So wait a minute. When you hit three, two, one play, we're going to hit play? Yes. On play, you hit play. Is that right. so hard to comprehend? When do I hit play? All right, and we're going to do this in three, two, one, play. Oh, what a beautiful shot already. Just of the arena and the, those six people coming on in with this newspaper. Jay, I am already stoked for this right now. I love this is so awesome. Are you going uh, to see the Hogan touching Elizabeth's backside here? Yep, and that, that amazing handshake of, oh, reaching on in, brother. Oh, speaking of brothers, brother love. My God, they are just beating down Hogan. 
There, you know what? I like, miss these opening graphics and just how they would do these montages. You don't see this anymore. It's all just pyro and fake inflatable things on their way to the ring. And I don't like that. I miss these days. I like this stuff as well, but I do think that there's a place for pyro as well. I love pyro. I think, I think pyro is awesome. But do you not want more slick side swipes as they're doing some montages of your storylines? Because that's I do fantastic. Love the side I also love the fact that um, that you're actually in this episode of Saturday Night's Main Event dressed up as Akeem. Okay, that has been played out on a different show. So let's give me at least King Kong Bundy if I shave my head. No, you're you look way more like Akeem than Conrad Thompson. I'm sorry. Not anymore, dude. I'm pretty much fully gray with a gray beard, so I'm more resembling Santa Claus than anything right now. Well, if uh, Kevin Nash can hit just for men, so can you. Why would I do that, though? I look great. You do look great. You look distinguished at the tender age of 23. Oh, don't tell my real age. I like to tell people that I'm only 14. Yeah, I can't it imagine get, it gets silver. It the gets, silver hair. Where's Mary Kay Laterno when you need her? Because because that would have been great for you had you been like a silver tongued, silver haired, fourteen uh, year old. Well, I mean, I like to say I'm fourteen just so I can get into movies for a lot cheaper. And movies, movies that have perfect, boobies. Movies that have boobies, you know. And to be perfectly honest with you, I was gray at fourteen. Oh my God, Jesse Ventura's white hat and lime green boa this is fantastic i think it's a, i think it's actually a bandana he's he's yeah he usually wore the bandana didn't he he did but that one actually looks like the uh that, that's a hat jay i'm pretty sure no oh no i see it tied up you're right yeah that's a that's a that's a do-rag if i ever saw one you know what's interesting about this stuff is sometimes every once in a while like you watch 80s wrestling and occasionally it's hard to pinpoint like what era it's from like obviously it's 80s but like early 90s but then you get a shot of the crowd and the crowd tells you right away oh yeah this is 89 or oh yeah this is like you can tell sometimes by the crowd the haircuts the 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 coke bottle I, I also I, I also just love the fact that they're clearly standing in front of a green screen with the the show being shown in the background yes it's it, like, like you feel bad for for Finkel standing there wondering how long he's got to stand there while they do all this and the crowd's just going banana. Right, exactly. He's just he's just standing there. He's like, ladies and gentlemen, I have to pee. You know what? If you want to say that I look like Akeem, I can straight up say that you look like the big boss man there. That's I don't I, look I, like that boss man. I look like 98 boss man. I don't look like 89 boss man. You look like a nice hybrid of the two, I would like to say. You don't yeah. have the belly, but you also don't have the hair that he's got at this age. So, What does that mean? I got, a nice... hair. I got a full head you... of hair. Yeah, okay. I'm sure, I'm sure you get told that. What? What are you talking about? If, if you can make the Just for Men jokes for me, then I can make the hair plug jokes for you, bud. I don't have any hair plugs. I have a full head of hair. Do you think that we can do this one year for Halloween where I dress up as Akeem and you dress up as the big boss man? Or in 2021, is that probably not allowed anymore? Maybe we should do it like now and just Zoom each other. That'll be fun. No, because we don't have anybody that we can get to be slick right now. We don't have that, that manager who can just be the jive soul bro that we need in our lives. That is true. It is true. We could, we could maybe scare up like a... Well, I don't even know. I have no idea. A scary sherry, if you will. Yeah, well, I like fortified wine, but I'm more of a port guy than a sherry guy. See, now, this is one thing I really liked about the Saturday night's main event show is the main event literally goes on first. They know that they're airing it at 1130 at night. Saturday Night Live is preemptive. They're doing it. No one wants to stay up past midnight because nothing good happens after midnight. I strongly stand by that. And here we go. The main, the <laughs> main light. event is coming out right now. Yeah. There are, 
there are people in this crowd dancing their asses off to this Jive Soul Bro theme and having a good time. That would be you and I, Jay, and you know that. I, well, I know that from experience. We've both done this before. If I'm not mistaken, there's been a couple of drunken Uber, Uber rides in our, in our past where we were either grooving to uh, Taylor Swift or the Jive Soul Brother theme song. Yes, I definitely remember those when when we lived in the same city and we could do things like getting an Uber together and you would try to convince me like, hey, let's just take this Uber to Montreal. What's it really going to do? We'll go out, we'll party, we'll come back. And I was like, Jay, are you paying for that? And then we stopped and just went to the local bar. I, I don't recall ever suggesting Montreal. I think Sarnia once. Uh, on, on that note. Either... On that note, though. Hey, hey. I like it. Hey, hey, it's Tyrone Flowers. You're listening to the Good Friends, Better Enemies podcast. Again, we're, we're going with the, the whole Akeem thing again. So Akeem's the African dream. Conrad's the, El, the, uh, the Alabama dream. What the hell does that make me, bud? Means it makes you the Peterborough prophet. All right. All right. I don't hate that. I don't hate that at all. And that makes you what? The, uh, the, the Markham Munchkin? Yeah. I'll, you know what? I'll take Munchkin. At this point in my life, I'll take Munchkin any day of the week. Twice on Sunday. I have to say, I though, love- looking at this show, like, uh, I, like I, I'm all for elaborate sets. I, you know I'm a big mark for, like, like uh, the in your house set and the like the old raw like the raw logo i loved like a lot of the attitude era sets where you had like royal rumble 2000 with the taxi cab and stuff like that but there is a special place in my heart for this old wwf logo set loved it it's the absolute best and i also love the fact that we're almost eight minutes into this show and they haven't even come out yet. They're just being interviewed. Like, this is how you build oh, it. You build it. You want people that. to watch it. Ew. That handshake is legend. That's how, from now on, we're going to shake hands. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sanitize the fuck out of my hand. And then we're going to just reach in for that deep handshake, brother. Oh, how much I wish this was 2016 and you were sanitizing back then. Was I? What was 2016? Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, no. No, I wasn't. I was drinking oh. sanitizer, not not putting it on my hands. Drinking sanitizer and eating urinal cakes. That was his breakfast, folks. That was a that was that was a that was a hard open for prep on Saturday mornings. Well, you were right there beside me, so you knew the, exactly what we were going through. Yeah, well, we were holding each other's hair for most of it. So, anyways, um this is fun. This is really cool. So you know what? I, I just uh, we're, right now we're watching Savage and Hogan be interviewed by uh, by Mean Jean with uh, oh my god, is she ever gorgeous, Elizabeth? She looks so great. Um, she's an absolutely breathtaking woman. Gotta ask you though, Tyrone. Like, since we're sitting here watching this and we're not really following a format tonight, we're just kind of just doing the watch along type deal. Just uh, out of curiosity, for you and I, like. In like in some semblance of realism, like if there was one event that you wish that you and I could have seen together, like in our lifetime, like maybe I guess maybe like this doesn't really apply because we're too young. But like if there was one event you wish you could have seen with me and with us been in the crowd together, what would you have picked? Do you really have to ask this question, Jay, or is this is this a trick question, a rhetorical question? Because I feel like. We have brought this up so many goddamn times that it's Survivor Series 96. Yeah, but we've never actually said that we would watch it together, like, live in attendance. It's just something, like, we would have been, like, 12, or I would have been 12, you would have been, like, 4. But, uh, no, but I just mean, like, um, I didn't realize that that was the event that you would have picked. That's okay, my can, Irish series. No, but also, can, can we pick our adult selves now going back to any show ever, or does it have to be yeah, us as that. adults? That, that's more fun. That's more fun. Any show. Then yeah, I'm picking. Uh, okay, let's let's go anything but Survivor Series 96, because we know yeah. that would probably be both of our picks. Yeah. If I could take you to anything, oh, this is 
this is a fun question, but I might go with uh, ECW Anarchy Rules 98, I think it was. It was 90, 98 or 99. But that's where I'd be taking you, bud. Is that so? Yeah, I feel like it would be a ton of fun. You would get to see all the in-ring classics that you like and as that I like as well. We would get to watch New Jack come out and just murder people for five minutes while his amazing Ice Cube theme played in the background. What more could you want? Apparently Jay wants a lot more and I left him speechless there. All right, well, Jay's not on the show anymore, so we're just going to watch this network special together, which is you and I, because I guess Jay doesn't care anymore, guys. He's probably just sleeping, enjoying his life. The Mega Powers are in the ring. They're trying to figure out who's going to go. They're both talking to Elizabeth right now. We don't really know what's going on. Does Hogan have the lust in his eyes? Was that a spoiler or some foreshadowing? Probably. Savage is going to start it out, though. We got the Macho Man in the ring with the Big Boss Man. My goodness, this is going to be a collision course right here. Okay, so I think that was a dramatic enough pose or pause, rather, for me to say that uh, imagining Tyrone taking me to ECW. That was, that's rough. I mean, I thought we were friends. Yeah, but we're we're good friends, but we're better enemies. So I mean, yeah, I was gonna you kind of like, got to play off that. I was gonna pick like three or six for you. I was at six, and I don't care to go to three. You wouldn't want to see Hogan Andre live, really. I mean, okay, yeah, I would, but at the same time, knowing our luck, we we would be somewhere like, but. Not the ringside. We'd be like, <laughs> we'd be <laughs> middle <laughs> level where we could we couldn't see anything. We'd be stuck on the floor, like forty five rows back, and be like, "What the hell's going on?" There's no screens. We don't we don't know what's happening. We don't yeah. know who's in the ring. Yay! We'll clap when we're told to clap. We'll boo when we're told to boo. So no, we, no we, that's why I don't want to do three. We 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 would show up at at Pontiac at the Silverdome and be like, "No, no, these are for the closed circuit tickets at the at the theater down the road, like forty five minutes away." And then knowing us, we'd just be like, screw it. Let's go find a strip club or a Hooters. Are they really all that different in 1987? I don't even know if Hooters was a thing in 87, to be honest. Or what strip clubs were like in 87. They women, could be very different. Women, women had breasts in 1987, Tyrone. I'm aware they had breasts. I had. I probably had breasts in 87. <laughs> like, let's be real. <laughs> That's probably the funniest thing I've ever heard you say. That's very funny. I like that. Oh, well, okay. I got gotcha. you. So now we got, we, got, um, we got Hogan doing the uh, obligatory uh, turnbuckle spot here with uh, Hogan or with uh, Boss Man. Which is something we don't see enough of anymore. You know what? There's one, like, okay, so there's a lot of spots that you see, like, in old school, like, even 80s or, like, 90s wrestling that you don't see as much of these days. Um. Some of them I don't necessarily agree like, with. Like but, I, I no, wish like, still had the Savage, sleeper hold. I agree with you 100% on that. But even Savage just doing that double axe handle. You don't see a double axe handle anymore really either. You know what? There's one spot though that I'm glad that's gone. Is the 10 punches. Is it? Is it? The 10 punches. Oh, in the that's, because that, it's that's so, a good one. It is a good one, but it's so like just exposes the business. You punch somebody. No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. I'm, Bruce. I'm saying it's a good one, as in, yeah, I don't want to see it anymore. Like you made a good choice. Yeah, no, no, that's yeah. No, it's, see, it's, see, mine is I. The one I don't want to see anymore is the atomic drop, especially when they hold them up and the guy just starts kicking his feet like he's riding a bicycle. It's so stupid. The inverted atomic drop, I get. But the atomic drop itself is, oh my god, let me let me put my knee in this guy's in this guy's 
in this guy's butt, essentially. And you know what? I'm not going to lie. That just sounds like a fun little Tuesday to me. I like Tuesdays. Me too. Especially when I can see you next Tuesday. That's my favorite kind of Tuesday. Oh boy, here we go. What? I, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, nothing. I'm just uh, I'm just taking in the... Taking oh, the- I just... Oh. Uh, apparently I just got my head rammed off of a boot there, so that hurt me. There's okay. something you don't see very often. Remember that spot? Hogan going, up to the, Hogan going up to the ropes is something you don't see very often at all. That's true, yeah. That is actually a very good point. You don't see that very often, especially because he was billed as uh, six six eight, I believe. Which, funnily enough, when I met him, I was taller than him, and I'm a I shoot. Don't, I I'm don't shoot get six. I, I'm six five and a half. Like shoot. And this is when I was sixteen, so I might have been six five. I think I grew half an inch since then. But yeah, I'm I was no taller case. than the man. Um. Yeah, I well, I mean, it's it's an old thing in wrestling. We have the worked uh, the worked heights and weights, but uh, for the longest time, you know, he was billed at like three hundred and thirty pounds, and and uh, I think it was six seven or six eight. No, no, I think no, it's six no, seven. No, no, no. It was it was never three hundred and thirty pounds. If you go back, I know three hundred. Think of Mar- I'm sorry. How many say that one more time? Three hundred and three pounds. Exactly. Exactly. That's 27 pound difference. So get your facts together before you start shitting on Hogan's weight. Okay. I would think that if there's one person that you were a fan of me shitting on, it'd be Hogan. But I, uh, I gotta say, uh, I, I, there were times like in the early, uh, parts of his run, like in 85, 86, even maybe even 84, he was billed as 330 pounds. Well, that was before he was the immortal Hulk Hogan. That when was you when you become he, immortal. He, Hogan. Exactly. When you become an immortal, you can't go over 303 pounds, Jay. I know this. That's why I'm no longer immortal. That's true. I like, oh, I love that boss man slam. Modified version. That was, that was yeah, that was just a spine buster to a degree, dude. I know, but I think that, that he was using that for a while as his finish, as opposed to the boss man slam that we saw later on i love that so this is the main event number two like this isn't saturday night's main event i think this one might have actually been done on a friday that's why they called it that but main event number one when hulk hogan was in the match who was the referee i don't recall it was hebner it was when he lost the title to andre and now who's the referee right now it's Hebner. Are Which we going to get another promo? This, well, that looks like originally, Dave. Well, it was Dave in the first one. And then Earl was the second referee. And I'll never, ever forget. I, like, even as 25, 30-year-old me looks back on, on that, nothing in my mind would have been like, how much was the plastic surgery, brother? How much did he pay you to get him to look like you? No, I would have been like, uh, who's your brother? What's going on here? Yeah, I, I, I understand like that, that particular Saturday night's main event is held into reverence because of the fact that, you know, it was probably like one of the highest rated segments in the history of wrestling at the time on television. Like it was huge, obviously, but if you like break so, it, down, about- it was so stupid. Oh, yeah. And, and about, sorry, about like 90 seconds ago, if that, we just saw Slick hit Savage with the cane when he went off the ropes. This is something that I miss. I miss the heel manager that was doing all these dastardly tricks on the back to help get his team together. Yeah. You, we need more managers. We don't need more. Oh, what do we have instead of man- advocates? Like Paul Heyman's fine. Paul Heyman's fine now. Yeah, he's, but he never interferes. Do- he never does anything to like, like for example, when he was managing Brock. Like he never did anything. Well, Brock didn't need it, obviously. And and I don't. And I think that maybe for like uh, Roman Reigns, it would be more of a detriment than a help. Uh, you know, you like for Reigns to like need this smarmy Paul Heyman to help him. But 
Uh, no, I, I, I do agree with you that I think that wrestling managers are something that are sorely missed in 2020 or 2021. Um, but at the same token, I just, oh, there we go. Savage just wiped out Elizabeth. Uh, he sure did, and we know it's coming next. He's coming to check on his partner, but look, we're never going to get we're never going to get managers like we did in the eighties or nineties. We're never going to get that again. It's just not going to happen. I I hate to agree with you on that one, but you're right. I just it, it's a pipe dream of mine. I would love to see it come back. You know, on that on that uh, point and on, on that topic, we I posed the question. Uh, a while back. Oh, hold on. Sav- Savage is looking at him. Savage is getting angry. He sees what he sees. The lust in his eyes, brother. He's getting hot. He's getting hot. He needs to snap into a Slim Jim right now. He sure does. He needs a beef and spice. Oh, yeah. And, and, and everything nice. Beef and spice and everything nice. I think that's what Hogan's hoping to do to Elizabeth right now. Um, I think that's I think that's the name of our tag team. To be honest with you, beef and spice, and everything nice. That seems like a long name, though. Then we'll just be called the uh, the beef and cheddars, and we can be sponsored by Arby's. How about the beef and spice connection? How about the beef and spice non? Uh, No, I don't want connection or foundation or incorporated. How about the beef and spice conglomerate? All right, I'll take that. That's fine. Oh, there goes Hogan running down the aisle with Elizabeth while Savage is angry. Why does he look like she's like he's carrying her like she's so heavy? Like he's Hulk Hogan. Look, he's barely carrying her. Well, he got her to the stretcher, and now this is where he should go back to the match and let the medical professionals help her out. But no, At I'm the sorry. Local medical this Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan is the absolute heel in this. He walked out on his partner. It is true. Yeah. If you look at this like, whole angle entirely, like Hogan should be the, there you see the heart foundation behind. Uh, if you look at this entire angle, like Hogan really should have been the heel in this. Hogan was a heel for most of his career. I totally he agree. He worked like a heel. He just literally, sh- uh, say, uh, wow, waved the American flag. And that made him okay in everyone's eyes. Then people finally woke up and were like, no, this dude's kind of a dick. Yeah, I'm not going to argue with you. I bet you if we looked on Chalkline or a different service, we could find these medical services jackets reproduced with probably Hogan and Savage's faces on them. And See, if that, not, fun, and that they, would be a fun night, they, a fun Halloween night. Like you and I in Peterborough wearing like local medical facility jackets and just like getting bombed and running around and like trying to check on people. We'd get arrested. But I anyway. think I think that's a terrible idea. I think people would actually <laughs> think we were serious, and then we'd get screwed by probably killing somebody. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, somebody's over here having a heart attack. Ah, oh, it's fine. Just pour vodka down his throat. It'll yeah, be good. Yeah. He's choking. Oh, it's fine. Let's just give him a figure four. Yeah, we'd be screwed. We'd end up in jail, and then we'd be the ones getting figure four in prison because we we'd lose. That's a different kind of figure four altogether. And a figure four, I don't. That's, I don't, that's I don't, the I don't that's the finger four. Oh boy, that's yeah. Well, I, it's one away from a fist. Um, Here we go. <laughs> Akeem is dancing his way over to Macho Man though, while he's beating on him. I love that. While he's beating there is, on him. This crowd is not feeling it now. Oh, frig you, Hogan. You're just on her bedside like she's dying. She's perfectly fine. She got knocked over. She probably has a sprained ankle. You don't need to pray by her bedside. You think they double-checked before they shot this that she didn't have any bats in the cave? (laughs) I think Randy double-checked that he wouldn't let anyone else. Yeah, fair enough. Um, even if only, a, even if only a nose, Savage is like, nobody's getting close to her. Yeah. You can clearly see that Hogan's like running until he, the shot's over and then he just starts walking. Um, it's also, it's also the most we may have seen Hogan actually run in a long time. 
Oh, he ran for the leg drop. He got pretty good height on that leg drop. I gotta say, like for all the negativity on he Hogan's got he work, got height, but he did not he did not run. He did a leisurely jog off the ropes. But look at the crowd erupting because they can see what we can't. And the immortal one is back, and cheering it's on Randy worst, Savage. It's probably the worst finishing move ever in wrestling. The leg drop, like I, oh, I understand not the worst in wrestling in the 80s, ever. No, it was. So bad. I don't think it's the worst by any stretch of the means whatsoever. Was it great? No, but it wasn't the worst. It I was pretty bad. I got to say that I think one of the worst ones was um, when what's his name uh, that Maya Via kid used the shark the uh, shoulder breaker. I thought that was terrible. Yeah, but that was that had like history. Like who else didn't it? Didn't like uh, somebody like um, Stan Stasiak use that the shoulder breaker? Yeah, cool. History is what it is. Back in the day, a body slam was a finishing move. We can't argue that right now. I don't know. I'm just saying that, like, a spe- like I think there's no question that the coolest finishing move of the 80s, like, for sure, was a DDT. Like, closely closely seconded by the elbow drop by, by Savage. But, oh, what a bump you just took. Oh, shut the hell up. You just belly flopped on the ground for no reason whatsoever. Just, so... <laughs> All right, all right, sidebar right now, because while this match is going on, what are your worst finishers? If you had to name five of all time, doesn't matter the era, what are the five worst finishers? Um, oh, I don't know, I have to think about it. That's, that's kind of hard, like, off the top of my head. Oh, Sa- Savage doesn't want to tag him. Oh, oh and there it is. There it is. Lusting I don't blame him for that. Hogan. Oh. Don't blame him for that at all. You sl- oh, and there you go with the high kick. I love it. That's nice. Good. It's like E Honda. Oh Jesus Christ! I'm more of a Ryu guy, but that's just me. I like Zangief, and he uh, Dalson was all solid, solid. I feel like I look most like Ryu. That's why I always try to pick him, but. I get it. He's the pretty boy. Everybody wants to be him, just like everybody wants to be me. On an unrelated topic, when's your appointment at LensCrafters tomorrow? Funnily enough, I actually need to go get glasses because I just failed my uh, my test for my license because I couldn't see anything. <laughs> well, that that makes sense because you think you look like Ryu, so yeah, like kind of like Ryu mixed with Ryan uh, Ryan Gosling and. Even Ryan Felipe and right, like Reynolds aluminum Ryan wrap. Reynolds, yeah, yeah, Ryan Reynolds. No, just Ryan Reynolds. And Reynolds like, aluminum wrap. I think more like it. No, I th- see this. I don't like. Like, okay, I get why he came back to get his championship belt, but he was already up, and then he came back. Like, was he just taunting Hogan? And now we're gonna beat on Hogan and get. Oh yeah, you are the champ, Mach. You let see, everyone but know. This is like this Screw these little gets- Hulk maniacs. This to me is like pure, like the only reason that Savage is a heel in this is because Hogan's so over. Like Hogan's like, it's the same thing as like if this had happened in the Attitude Era, like somebody like an Austin and 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 Rock had done this. Like Rock would have clearly been the heel, but Austin would have been in the wrong. Although to me, the difference is is that Austin was a character baby face, whereas Hogan was just a baby face. You know who this hurts the most, though, in this whole thing is Akeem and Boss Man. Like, they're well, supposed to be two monster heels right now, and yeah. they were doing fine when they were against two people, but now they're against one Hulk Hogan, and now he, he, he's just, he's hulking up. He's, he's doing the fist punches to the palm of the hand, because Hogan's working punches were terrible. This, is, this should have been a clean pin on Hogan. Instead of that, like, come on. Come on. No, I agree. This, it does. I, I get I mean, it. It's, it, not, it's not the story that we're trying to tell. I get that. But it should have been for this night. I don't disagree. But at the same token, I, I do think that, you know, like, if you look at this for what it is, I mean, um, are you really going to be hurt that much by doing the job to Hogan at this point? Probably not. I don't know. Ask Dino Bravo. Ask Haku. Ask 
everybody who got buried by him and never really went anywhere. Well, Bossman still went somewhere. Akeem didn't do much, but I always thought that Akeem should have done the one man gang gimmick in the WWF at some point. He did at Mania 17 in the Battle Royal. Yeah, but I mean, like, he should have maybe had a run as one man gang, like, maybe in like the early 90s or something. You know, he was one man gang in the 80s, right? Before mm-hmm. he was Akeem. I do. Well, you just said that he should have had a run as one man gang in the Fed, so that made me think that you only thought of him in the other corporations like that. No, no, no. I just thought that he should have had, like, that would have maybe, like, kept him stronger, like, say after the Akeem thing fizzled out, just do the one man gang thing in the, in the, uh, in the Fed. It's kind of like the same thing with Barry Windham. Like, I like, I love the Barry Windham, like, Widowmaker, like, moniker. Like, Widowmaker was kind of, like, edgy for, like, 1990 or 1989. Like, you didn't hear stuff like that. So, like, Widowmaker, that's kind of like, I like that. Yeah, that's fair. I get that. You got lust in your eyes, Elizabeth. I love that. No one's got lust. No one's got lust in their eyes for Hulk Hogan. Let's be real. Uh, I bet you he had a lot of opportunity back in this day. (laughs) Yeah, but. But with the wrong types of people. I don't know what that means. Oh, just the old moms that don't care. I'm pretty sure that Hulk Hogan in 19, like from like 19. You know what? Even to today, he probably has opportunities. Uh, but especially at this time, like back in like the height of his height of his uh, popularity, I'm sure he had no like he was married, obviously, but I'm sure he had no shortage of opportunities with very yeah, good that's, looks. Yeah, that's fair. You're, when you're right, you're right. Which is I was wrong once a long time ago. You got lust in your eyes. That's it. They're just cutting a promo of something fierce right now. Unfortunately, that's what a lot of these were, was more promos than wrestling. Oh, I guess that's kind of like current, wasn't it? Well, this is like, this was raw before it was raw, right? Like, you needed to have this stuff. Oh, you this is way better than, but this is up. way better than raw. Friggin' raw was nothing compared to a Saturday night's well, main event. I mean, I thought that Raw was awesome at certain... Oh, boy. There you go. No, Savage just snapped. I love seeing that medical supply tray just flying and Savage just knocking the hell out of him. And now Elizabeth's fine, though. Yeah, she's good now. And she's checking on Hogan. Which is the wrong move. It sure is. Looks like he's going to nail much. Yeah, what are you going to do, much? Oh, oh my! That was Jesus. that was a hell of a throw. Holy I forgot shit. about that. So I did I. That. I really hope Jeez. she got thrown onto something comfortable at least. Yeah. Oh, and here's Brother Brood Eye. Who are these officials? Who's this guy? He looks like Hans Zimmer. That's Pat Patterson, the late great Pat Patterson, taking a bump. Yeah. Is that Nick Bockwinkle? No, it might be Rene Goulet. No, Rene Goulet. No, didn't have that. No, that's, I think that's Nick Bockwinkle. In 89 in the Fed? I think so. He was an official back then. I think pretty sure that's Bockwinkle. It is. All right. All right. You got me. I'm surprised at that, actually. Is it not? It might be. Well, so here we are, folks. Hercules, the mighty Hercules. We've transitioned from the biggest angle of the, arguably the biggest angle of the 1980s Hogan run to Hercules. And I will say this. uh, Hercules had an outstanding match with Jake the Snake Roberts at SummerSlam 1988. I've talked about this to at nauseum with people, and I still don't think you watched it, nor do I think Tyler from the uh, Good Friends Better Enemies podcast has watched either, but it was a hell of a match. Nor, nor do I think either of us ever will. Yeah, that's that's uncalled for. 
No, I don't think it is. Oh, but I like. Okay, so are they actually there for commentating at this point, or is they that sure something? are? Yeah, I don't think they started doing green screen stuff until like ninety one, ninety two. No, the beginning of the show was definitely green screen. The way that it was set up. Mm, I don't know because they were still doing stuff like in eighty nine. Like they were still doing like the. I think that was the the Oktoberfest one and they were doing the the one from Texas and they did stuff like that in 89 still. They were still making so much money at this point. They were they were still doing stuff live. Or oh, okay. live live to tape. Yeah, sorry. My bad. Is that is that Horace Hogan helping uh as the uh as a medical professional? No, it's Clint Howard. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I like that. Yeah, was when you but, but between this and Apollo thirteen, yeah. I love that this is what DiBiase is doing though, and he was in the main event of WrestleMania not even a year before, and now he's fighting Hercules. Yeah. Uh, DiBiase to me. Okay, so DiBiase's got to have one of the greatest theme songs ever. Uh, yeah. Gotta be, right? Okay, so top five, like, uh, theme songs from the 80s. From the 80s or the 80s and early 90s? No, I would say, yeah, I guess 80s, early 90s. I guess that's fair. Uh, Dusty Rhodes, Demolition, The Rougeau Brothers, Jive Soul Bro, and I guess, I guess since we said 80s, I'm going to throw Bad Street USA in there. And yeah, DiBiase doesn't even make my top five. Wow. Okay, fair enough. What do you got? But I don't know. I know particular order I'd have to go with probably DiBiase, Jake. Jake Jake probably has like my top like maybe three entrance musics of all time, entrance themes of all time. Um, I, for me, I think you have to put Real American in there just because of you know, the, the impact of it. Uh, I loved I love Savages too because I'm a huge fan of, of classical music, so I'm a huge classical music fan and and, uh and film soundtrack fan film score fan so like just for my my own personal taste and ear i'd probably have to put savage in there and then um uh i guess flair maybe okay i was gonna say if you put savage and not flair in there after saying that whole film score and classical music nonsense then i would have jumped through the phone and beat the living hell out of you i don't think you would have I don't think that's possible. That's not physically possible, Tyrone. Well, then I would have got a concussion trying to jump into my phone. Don't get concussed. Not on my not on my behalf. Well, I'm getting another beer. That's fair. Are you still drinking beers, pal? I am on to um, a splash. Spike star or spiked sparkling water, an orange mango one. What's that now? Uh, it's not good. That's what it is, Jay. That's what it is. I'm going to be finishing this and probably going to pour myself a scotch. That's a lie. It's actually not. I would love to see you drink scotch. Well, I'm about to. Uh, just for a shoot right now, like in real time, can you please send me a a screenshot of you drinking scotch? I would love to see this. Nope. This is like a lot of character for you. We could just turn on the, the video portion of this app and you can watch me drink the scotch. I would like to see this very much. You know what? I'm turning on the video right now. Can you see me? We're still recording. This is nice. And can you see me, though? <laughs> I sure can. Can you see me? No, I just see a dog. Oh, what is this, Jay? Looks like a slow cooker. Oh, okay, there's the scotch. Oh, 
Well, there you go. Glenn Morandi. That's what we're doing right now. Popping is, that cork. This is very un- uncharacteristic for Tyrone to be drinking scotch. I didn't even know he knew what scotch was, other than butterscotch. We're going to drink it out of a bushwhacker's glass. Mm. Well, I think this has fallen off the rails, the watch-along. Oh, yeah. We knew that was going to happen, though. I still oh, enjoy nice this DB Aussie match, so I got to tell you, watching this DB Aussie poured match, a pint of scotch. That's, let's see. I'd like to see this. No, it's, it's not. It's, that, that, that's, it's probably that, a solid, like, three or four ounces. That's a keg-sized glass of wine right there. Yeah, this is going to not be fun. <laughs> if you had to pour scotch for the DB Aussie match. Oh, than... <laughs> oh, oh, no ice. Are you nope. drinking it neat? I'm drinking it neat. Oh, God. Good for you. Yeah, I'm is, glad we're not. I'm this is actually quite. Now. It is a tasty beverage, though. I don't think it is. At all? No, no it actually. No, I actually. I'm really enjoying it. My kitchen's cold. I don't turn heat on in my house. My kitchen like minus is cold. thirty out. It's like minus thirty outside. It's like minus ten inside. We're good. That's that's very interesting news. Well, I love scotch and the rocks, but my kitchen's super cold, so I'll just drink it neat. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Oh, but you just missed one of your favorite spots there, the banging the head off the turnbuckle. No, my fa- okay, so DB Aussie for me though, like my favorite. I love the uh the fist drops. Yeah, I do like the fist drops. Oh, so good. Love the fist drops. And then I also love um he does the spinning toe hold as well. I love that. Oh, and the million dollar dream. Well, that goes without saying. Where are you going now? I guess, I'm going to pour some of this back in the bottle because I know I can't finish it all right now. <laughs> That's probably for the best. That and... Poured four fingers of scotch into a bush wax. Yeah. yeah. How many fingers are you leaving in the glass? No, one. Don't, yeah, one. Okay. One. One. Perfect. I have a full... I have another <laughs> bottle of Jack Daniels... Uh, special reserve i haven't opened yet i'm sure oh my god you know what i had over do you know what i had over the holidays that i don't know if you can get again but it was so freaking delicious db also just took a change the turnbuckle why is hercules hulking up why is db aussie so oh my god this is the end of the show this is the last match is it yeah this is a two-match show there's only no. four minutes left. Oh, boy. Well, a well, good thing I poured most of that scotch back in the bottle. Jesus. Call him Jercules, not Hercules. And he's going to win. Why is he doing it? No, 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 okay, Virgil. So he looks like he looks like Eugene. He really does. There we go. The right man won. I would think so, yes. If they had hurt beating D.B. Aussie, I would have been pissed off. I'd like to see you get pissed off about that. Uh, oh, well, Herc was. He just straight-armed him right to the face. Oh, he's, and now he, he body slammed him and he doesn't know what to do. No, he really doesn't. Earthquake spin. Got, Earthquake spin. Aussie, he's not calling right now. He's just looking no. for the chain. Oh, God bless Virgil. Yeah, thank God that that chain was real, because otherwise that would have been, like, bad news for the uh, for the crowd. Yep. Well, I kind of feel like we fell off the rails there a bit with the, uh, with the end oh, of the show. Oh, no, but we're back, we're back to Hogan. We sure are. Oh, my God, his selling right now is killing me. Uh, uh, uh. If you don't like the scotch, stop drinking it. No, the scotch is delicious. 
Is he hulking up from an ice pack right now? Seems to be. Brother. So so this is how we're going to end the show, is just Hulk in the trainer's room, rubbing this his is, eyes? This is definitely better than, than anything Sid ever did. <laughs> I'm so glad to hear you say that, because I couldn't agree more. I was being sarcastic. I wasn't. Yeah. Well, I don't know, man. I think this was okay. I didn't hate it. Yeah, th- this was... We probably should have looked into this a little bit more before we were like, yeah, let's do a watch-along of this. Yeah, oh, is he going to just like, so run out again and then the camera ends? Yeah. Oh, main event continues. It's going to close with, with Ventura and Vince. Just it, live in the yeah. ring. No, Fink, at least Finkel got to go pee. Yeah, because there's only a, not even two minutes left, so this is it. Yeah, I think so. Well, I, understand, no, I no. can understand why people think Vince had a toupee. His hair was like too perfect. But he, he has his real hair, but his hair right, was here, just so formed. Here's what we're going to do, Jay. We're going to do something a little different right now because this was supposed to be a bit of a bonus episode. I'm turning my video off now. We don't need to see each other anymore. I'm right, done with it, also. Okay. Um, we've been going for just over an hour. And on average, we go for an hour to an hour and a half. But I'm thinking, screw it. We planned a watch along. We thought it might have gone a little longer. Let's do something that we used to do when you and I were just measly 20-something-year-olds hanging out at a bar. And I want you to fantasy book something for me. I know that's what our show is, but I want you to give me a 10-match card. Anything goes, any era, any superstars, living or dead, fantasy book, your ultimate 10-match card for me right now. Do I have to do it right now? No. Okay, maybe not. Give me, give me something that, well, talk about on-the-fly booking here, kids. We, we have no idea what we're talking about anymore, but why don't you give me, if you could make... Three matches with anybody in them. Is there anything that comes to your mind right now? Red Hart versus Hulk Hogan for the WWF Championship at SummerSlam 1993. Okay. Uh, I know this is going to be probably Hogan heavy, but I would like to see Austin versus Hogan. Okay. And um, Rock versus Shawn Michaels. I do not agree with a single one of those. You could not pay me to watch most of them. That's a lie. No. I don't want to see Rock versus Shawn Michaels. Uh, you don't want to see Shawn, DX Shawn Michaels, like Attitude Era Shawn Michaels versus like height of his popularity uh, Rock? No, I don't. Like promos Cause, alone? Because I don't like The Rock. I'm not a Rock bark. And neither am I, but I think that that match, it was one that never happened. It should have. I also don't want to see Brett versus Hogan. Yeah, well. Well, on that note, folks, ladies and gentlemen, I think we've had a good uh, good little run here on this uh, watch along. Do you have anything else to say? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> all right, go ahead. What are your three? My three all-time matches that I could rebook? Well, obviously, number one is Jerry Lawler versus Andy Kaufman in a Texas death match. Well, of course it is. Well, yeah. if you don't Texas death match, you can't go wrong. No, but being real, I would like to see, um, like, I'm going to pick and choose. Like, I'm going to take somebody from one era into another era, because that's what fantasy booking is. Sure is. And I would like to see JBL versus Terry Funk in a legit Texas death match. Oh, boy. Here we go. No, I think that'd be great. I'm not even trying to be a dick on that one. I think that one would actually be great. And then I'm going to take, then I'm going to take Bull Nakano versus Asuka, because again, I think that would be incredible. Yeah. And then I'm going to go with the fiend Bray Wyatt versus Matt Bourne's version of Doink the Clown. See, I've long, I've long uh, held, in my opinion, that um, Matt Bourne. 
the Doink the Clown, the heel Doink the Clown, could have made events at WrestleMania. Oh, easily, but just you could have you could have built the whole thing like the whole thing around like some kind of like psychotic like the set could have been like some kind of psychotic like county fair deal and that would have been an actually an amazing like um, cinematic match. A county, yeah, but fair. but cinematic matches weren't a thing at the time. I know they weren't, but I'm just saying it would have been cool. Yeah, it would have been good. Just seeing that character in the main event of WrestleMania would make me happy. I don't even care who he's working with, except Lex Luger. No Lex Luger. Yeah, no, I agree. I like that a lot. All right, well, I think I think we did good for our first bonus episode here, bud. We did a little bit of watch-along. We did a bit of fantasy booking. I drank a bunch of scotch. I ate an edible. I haven't melted yet. So far, things are going good. I think so, too. George is getting upset. So let, let's at that, at that point put a bow on today and let's just, let's just keep keeping on keeping on, man, because that's what you got to do. Keep living. Exactly. Love it. So, so I, unless you got anything else to say, brother, I think we're done with today. I think we're all square, pal. Let's, uh, let's put a bow on this one. And for myself and Tyrone... And for our first ever bonus watch along, which was a little rocky, but we got back on track. You've been watching along with us on the Good Friends Better Enemies podcast. Find us on social media, good double underscore enemies, Twitter, good double underscore enemies, Instagram. Bye. Bye.